The first thing I'm going to do is create a new file to put all the animation stuff in. Of course, this means I need a header file and a code file. In the header file, I'll do the usual include guard, and I'll make sure to include the header file inside of my code file. Now I'm going to use a struct to tie all of this stuff together. So I'm going to have a type def struct for sprite animation. For the sprite animation, we're going to want to have a reference to the atlas. And in order to use texture 2D, I'll have to make sure that we're including raylib. I'm also going to have an integer value that describes the frames per second of the animation. You also want to store all of the source rectangles for the animation. So for that, I'm just going to have a rectangle pointer, which we can just call rectangles. And then we also want an int to indicate how many of these there are. Now I'm going to add a function here, which I'm just going to call draw sprite animation pro. And it's basically going to emulate whatever the draw texture pro does in Raylib. So draw texture pro takes a texture and a source rectangle, and then it wants a destination rectangle, an origin, a rotation, and a tint. Now these two are going to live inside of the struct. The texture is a part of the struct and the source is going to be in a list of structs and we will decide which source to use. So we're going to find this and this is stored. So really we just need to have sprite animation as the first parameter and then these. So I'm going to copy this whole thing, paste it in here, and then I'm going to replace these with sprite animation animation. We know that we have the get time function in Raylib, which is going to tell us how many seconds since the window has started. We also know that FPS stands for frames per second, which literally means the number of frames divided by the number of seconds. So if we take get time and multiply it by frames divided by seconds, we will be left with just the frames. So I'm just going to start by creating this function. So we need a texture, a source, and all these other things. So the texture is going to come straight out of here. The source, I'm just going to create a rectangle called source, and then everything else is actually just the parameter. And for the source rectangle, we need to figure out which frame we want to use. So this animation.rectangles is a pointer to the beginning of an array that we're going to allocate at runtime. The reason that it's not a fixed size array is because I don't want to limit how many frames we're allowed to have, and I would rather manually allocate that memory at runtime. If we combine the length of the array with the frames per second and how long the window's been open, we should be able to consistently find out which frame we want to show. So to get the current frames index, we just need to use the getTime function, multiply it by the animation's frames per second value, and then use mod on the length of the rectangles array. Now we can safely use the index and we can draw the texture just like normal. Now we just need a way to create one of these sprite animation objects. Since we're doing some manual memory allocation at runtime, I prefer to wrap this in a function of sorts. Create sprite animation will return a sprite animation and we're going to have it take in all the values we need. So we need the atlas, we need the frames per second, and we're going to also grab the rectangles array and the length here as well. First things first, I'm going to create a sprite animation set everything to zero and return it. This way I don't forget to return it later when I finish the function. Some of these values I can initialize right here. So the atlas can just be the atlas. Frames per second can just be the frames per second and the length can just be the length. The memory though is gonna pose a different challenge. Let's include standard library. We're gonna need this. To initialize the rectangles value, we're gonna need to do a little bit of extra work. I'm gonna grab a pointer called mem and I'm gonna set it equal to the rectangle pointer cast of the memory allocation. This is from standard library. I need the size of one rectangle times the length because we're actually building an array. But we do need to make sure that this mem is legit. So I'm going to check if it's null, in which case I want to do a fatal log. And in the case where we didn't allocate enough memory, I'm just going to return this incomplete sprite animation. This doesn't ever happen. If this happens, then there is a serious problem somewhere else in my program. It's good practice to always check if it's null. In this case, the program will not behave normally because we're not actually loading in any of this animation. The animation will have no source rectangles. In fact, I should really enforce that by setting the length to zero in this case. However, in the case where we are able to allocate that memory, we can set the sprite animation rectangles array to mem. And now we just need to populate that value. At each value, I'm going to copy the rectangle from the parameter array that's passed in. For every create, we're going to need to dispose because we have this manual allocation of memory. So after create, I'm going to add dispose sprite animation. And all we need to do is free the animation's rectangles. Don't forget to add our function to the header. 
And now we can finally go to main.c and we can start plugging all this in. So I've included the animation.h file. I'm gonna wanna create a spot where I can load my texture and keep my animation. After we initialize the window, I can load the texture. Now we can set the animation to create sprite animation, pass in the atlas, the frames per second, which I'll just go to. And now we need to give the rectangles array and the length. This is where I'll put all the rectangles. After the curly brace, I can put a comma and put the length, which will just be three in this case. So the first rectangle is at zero, zero, and it's 32 by 32. And all the rectangles are the same size, but the second one is 32 over and the next one is 64. Now I know this stuff because I authored the document. Paint.net is free software and it does exactly what I need, which in this case, I can choose the rectangle select tool. And if I select a frame or a section of my atlas, I can see in the bottom left, it tells me that the selection top left is 32, zero, which are the X and Y values of the rectangle. And then it tells me the bounding rectangle size is 32 by 32, which is exactly what I need to know to be able to build my source rectangle. If you used our text packer to build your Atlas, then there is a way to export a header file that describes all of the source rectangles. I plan on covering this workflow and how I like to get my atlases into my Raylib project in a future video. So once again, I pass the Atlas, the frames per second, the list of the frames themselves, and then the length of that list. Once I've created the texture and the animation, I should be able to go down to the update draw frame and draw it just like this. So in this case, I'm putting it at 200, 200. I'm drawing it at a size of 64 by 64, which is technically a scale of 2.0 and I'm giving no origin. So it's going to draw from the top left of the image. And there we go. The animation is happening. It's a little small, so I'll make it bigger. At this point, what we have is really simple, but I'm sure that you can see how this could be expanded to build something much more powerful. If you want to play around with the source code from this video, the link to my GitHub is in the description. Feel free to follow me on there as most of my videos end up having source code posted there anyway. Thanks for watching.